Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nushalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. So today uh, we are going to talk about the conditions. So previously we talked about uh, the um, the theory of the contract, right? The pillars. If you look, uh, those pillars is actually a kind of conditions. And then we talked about the purpose and effect of the contract, right? Then um, the reason we talked about the purpose, we say that if all the pillars of are completed, if all the pillars are completed, what if there is an unlawful motivation? The reason, uh, the purpose of doing that particular contract, if the motive is unlawful, what will happen to that contract? So we talked about it earlier. So now we are talking about the conditions in a, in, in a sense that what uh, if all the pillars are completed, the three pillars are completed, but the parties, they want to make some additional conditions. So now today we are going to talk about what kind of conditions are accepted, what kind of conditions are not accepted, right? Is it possible for a seller or a buyer to add additional conditions? For example, um, can buyer add a condition that, okay, he should, the seller should deliver the product to my home, right? So if, uh, is it possible for a seller to make a condition to buyer that he has to pay the, the, the money up front. He has to make a deposit. See, these are the conditions. It is not in the pillar of the contract. So these are the additional conditions. So today we are going to talk about what kind of conditions that actually accepted. It is uh, valid. What kind of conditions are not valid? As simple as that. Yeah. Okay. So before we know about the conditions, we need to understand that, you know, that the Sharia already imposed a few conditions, which we already talked about earlier. The Sharia conditions, for example, you know, all these three pillars is actually coming from the Sharia. There is no doubt. For example, the buyer should be a legal capacity the buyer should be the buyer and seller, the both of the parties uh, should be, um, you know, uh, should be, should be uh, complete, uh, adult. you know, these are the conditions in a way that we understood that it is the pillars of the contract. It is also a kind of Sharia condition. So we are also going to talk about first the Sharia conditions. And then later, we are going to talk about the second part of the class is actually the conditions that stipulated by the parties, meaning you and me. Can I make additional conditions? Uh, like I told you, for example, the delivery. Yeah. For example, the upfront money. Uh, for example, you know, you should buy two pieces uh, for this price. Can a seller make this condition? Uh, the, 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 the one pair is actually 15 ringgit, but you have to buy two pairs. Then only I give you for 15 ringgit. If not, the price is 20 ringgit. You know, these are the, the, the ways that, so these are the conditions that stipulated by the parties. So we are going to talk about all these things today. So first of all, first part is actually what? Conditions imposed by law. So when I say law, here is actually Sharia. Sharia is the law. Islamic law is actually Sharia, yeah? The another English translation could be Islamic law, which is Sharia. So these are the conditions of the contract. Conditions refer to those attributes which are absent. The contract will not come into existence. And we have two, it divided into two main divisions. The first one is Ashar to Shari, which is a conditions put by the Sharia without which a contract cannot be realized. For instance, conditions relate to the capacity. This is one of the conditions, right? So this is also, you can call it conditions, you can call it pillars. 
uh, both are the same meaning here when it comes to Sharia. But the condition that may be put by the parties, like, like you and me, additionally, additional conditions that we are creating it. So now what we call it a Shartul Ja'li in order to achieve certain specific objectives. For example, if the borrower travel, then I will pay for him. So these are the, this is the condition, for example, the guarantor. The guarantor will tell that, okay, I, I guarantee him uh, in, in case if the borrower travel, uh, I will pay for him. You can give him your car. Uh, my friend wants to borrow. Uh, but if he in case travel, I will pay for him. So these are the things like conditions, additional conditions, you know, the, the, the parties are making it. It comes under the second division. So let us talk about the first division. The first division is what? Sharia. Under the first division, you have four types. You have a concluding contract. You have the validity of the contract. You have the execution of the contract. You have the contract to be binding. So perhaps it looks like uh, a new types that you are learning. But uh, let me tell you before you go into these four, it is not something that you are going to learn new. It is already you learned. This is not new. Uh, so these are the things like shurutul al is something that, you know, what you do when you are doing the contract, concluding the contract. So there are certain conditions that Sharia already stipulated. When I say Sharia already stipulated, which means that you already know. Because we've been talking about it uh, since uh, two, three weeks. Uh, we were talking about the pillars of the contract. This is all Sharia is the one who actually uh, already stipulated. So here we are just giving some additional names. Yeah, so nothing much. So you don't have to get confused. This is as simple as that. We are just giving you some names so that, you know, we are actually classifying uh, the, the, the in, in the name of conditions. Okay, now let's see one by one. The first one is what? Shurutul Aniqat. So all this comes under the Sharia conditions. So the Shurutul Aniqat have, you have general conditions, for example, offer, acceptance, yeah, capacity, subject matter. See, this is all the pillars. So this is not something... I'm teaching you new. This is the pillars of the conditions. Sorry, pillars of the contract. So these are the general conditions with regards to all the pillars of the contract. So it comes in there. Then you have the specific conditions. For example, the physical transfer of a property is a condition in contract, in contract of gift, borrowing, deposit, loan, mortgage. In the absence of this condition, the contract cannot be concluded. Likewise, the presence of the two witness uh in the contract of marriage okay i i have two i am okay okay look here i told you the physical transfer so this physical transfer is different from what i told you earlier at uh, the condition of the transferring the delivery no that's different here look here when we talk about physical transfer for example you want to give you want to give something as a donation to someone. You should give the money to him. Physical transfer must be done, right? You want to give uh, sadaqat al fitr to someone, meaning to say that you cannot say, okay, I have given you the sadaqat al fitr, but I will deliver to you after some time. No, cannot be done, right? If someone gives you a birthday gift, cannot say that, okay, I will give you after two months. No, cannot be. That's not the gift yet. So the gift is actually something that you give you give it to someone in a physical transfer. So that's why, whether it is a gift or borrowing, for example, you want to borrow a car from someone, it has to be a physical transfer. So that's a specific condition that we are talking about. Likewise, uh, when it comes to the marriage, as I told you, marriage also is a kind of contract, uh, then you, you should have two witnesses, two witnesses for uh for marriage right so these two witnesses must be there uh so being there is actually a a contract a condition so these are the conditions sharia already stipulated but we are here we are actually classifying in the name of shurutul which is actually concluding 
contract. Meaning to say, without this physical transfer, without these uh, two witnesses, you cannot conclude a contract. You have number two, shurut of siha. So siha is actually the, what the validity. When it comes to validity, if these conditions, which if not present, would make a contract void. Yeah, for example, a contract should be free from elements of uncertainty and ignorance. See, again, it goes back to um, pillar number three. Because pillar number three is what? Subject matter, right? You remember the pillar number three? The thing that we are dealing with, the property or the product. So, for example, the product that I'm dealing with, it has to be clear from uncertainty. Uh, I, I should know what I'm selling. So this is actually validity of the contract, such as ignorance about the price or the type of currency. If uh, someone ignored, I mean, someone is actually ignorant of this price, then uh, you cannot conclude a contract. I want to buy your car, but I should know how much it is, how much you are offering. If you are saying, okay, I, I'm selling you the car, but right now I don't know the price. No. The contract cannot be validated. It cannot be validated until you give the price. Yeah. Similarly, a contract entered into by duress or contract involving fraud or in not valid. Selling a car or a house on the condition that the purchaser should rent or resell it to the seller is white. So this all comes under validation. Yeah. Then you have number three. Conditions for the execution of the contract. So these are the two conditions. There are two conditions. Number one, the party to a contract should be an ownership over the subject matter or guardianship or agency for minor and prodigals. So now you see, in order to execute a contract, there must be some proper qualification, right? In order to execute, first of all, you want to sell something it must be yours. Yes. If you are a minor, even though you own that property, you are a if you are a minor, then your guardian must be there. Or in, the, in other cases, your agent must be there. So now this is what we call executing. Shurutu Nafaz. Executing is actually something that the ownership must be there. This is the first condition. The party should, to a contract should be an ownership over the subject matter. This is where actually problem comes. Can I sell something uh, that I'm not owning? Can I sell something to someone whereby I myself is not actually um, bought it? The answer is no. Can I sell something that uh, someone is selling in, uh, in, a, in an online, but I don't have the product? but I want to promote, I want to sell, I want to show to someone that I'm having it. But the fact is actually I don't have it. The moment that he order, then only I will go and order and myself and then I get it done. Then I will deliver to him. So this is something here what we are talking. When you are not the owner of something, you cannot sell unless you are the agent, right? If the owner of the property made you an agent, I mean, you can sell on his behalf, which we call it agency, then it is fine. But if you're not agent and then, and then all of a sudden you just want to sell it from somewhere, but you are not owning a stuff, then you are not supposed to sell. Number two, the property should not involve a third party's right. Yeah, this is also something that, uh, you know, uh, if the party, if, for example, you are selling a property, but that property is not belong to only one person, it belongs to somebody else, you cannot sell that property. You have to wait until all those people settled. For example, a person who suffers from a death sickness is not allowed to interfere in more than one third of his property without the permission of heirs. So we discussed this before right so because if you cannot even sell your entire property uh, because your own properties actually should be inherited to your children that actually belong to 
someone, I mean, belong to your hairs. So you cannot completely sell your uh, property when, when someone is actually suffering from death. Similarly, an insolvent person is not allowed to sell his property in a way that would harm the creditors. This is also we discussed earlier. If you are bankrupt, if you are bankrupt, you cannot sell your own property because it's related to a creditors because you are going to be bankrupt. So you meaning to say you have to settle by uh, so the judge has to the, the bank or the judge has to sell your pr properties so that they can actually settle the creditors. So you yourself cannot sell your own property. So this is comes under Shurutun Nifaz, which is execution of the contract. Then you have number four condition that render a contract binding. So this is actually something that uh, we have to know that all uh, contracts are binding. So binding means what? Binding means um, it's complete. It's complete. There is no issue. There is no options are open. Meaning, you know, um, there is. A, this is what we are going to learn in the next class probably. Um, uh, we have uh, we have like khiyar, for example. You know, you actually can go and buy in a market uh, saying that, okay, I'm ready to buy this car, this used car, but I will only confirm with you after three days. So this is what we call option. I will be using this car for three days. If I'm happy with this car, then inshallah, I will be paying the money. So now, which means that you are practicing, you are exercising option, which we call khiyar. Yeah. So as long as this uh, khiyar, the op you are practicing, you are practicing the option within that three days, meaning that the contract is actually not binding. It is not binding because only after three days only it will be binding. Yeah. So the presence of options makes a contract non-binding until the options are exercised or the contracts are approved. Okay. So we talked about the Sharia contract. We are, we saw, sorry, we talked about the Sharia conditions. As I told you earlier, it is not something new. All these four um, types of conditions, all these four types, it is not something new. It is already there in the three pillars. We only gave you a different name to understand how it works. But now we are going into the second part of the class. The second part of the class is actually conditions stipulated by the parties. So this is something important. Because this is something that we can ask now. I fulfilled all three pillars of the contract, which means that I fulfilled all the condition that Sharia prescribed. But now, can I add any conditions from my side? For example, as a seller, can I add any conditions? As a buyer, can I add any conditions? So what kind of conditions are valid? What kind of conditions are not valid? This is what we are going to learn from this. The parties are free to choose a particular form of contract. You see, it's not necessary. It has to be the contract has to be done uh, face to face. Not necessary. It has to be done in the market. It can it can be done anywhere. It you can actually choose any form of contract. You can do online e-commerce, right? You can do face to face. You can do shopping, like uh, you know, in the phone, in the in the in the website. You know, any form of contract. Even you are you actually you are actually also allowed to do it in the vending machine, which we are doing, right? We are doing some contract where there is no people at all. We are talking to machines. Uh, so this is all actually any particular form of contract is free to choose. However, once concluded, they are not free to change or add new effects to a contract. The effect and consequences for each individual contract are already determined by the Sharia. These effects and consequences result and apply automatically. However, however, this is what actually we learned before. But however, the parties may add conditions the seller and buyer, they actually can add conditions that are harmonious with the nature of the contract. If it is harmonious, for example, as I told you, like, uh, you know, delivery, for example, you bought a refrigerator uh, and then you ask buyer, OK, I will I'm ready to um, I'm sorry, you ask the seller, 
uh, you say you tell him that i'm ready to buy your refrigerator but you have to uh, physically uh, deliver the refrigerator to my house so this is a condition which is actually harmonious for instance a seller may require uh, of the buyer a down payment in return for a stated delay in the payment of the price of goods for example you know you really like that refrigerator and then you went there and then you said okay i want to uh, buy this uh, but my condition is actually you have to uh, deliver to my house and then you said okay i want to buy this but i will pay you after 2 3 days and then it is also possible for the seller to ask you like this okay since you are you wish to buy this refrigerator is good i can also deliver to you there is no problem uh, you can also settle your payment after 3 days there is no problem but now i need a down payment from you now the seller is talking to the buyer now i need a down payment so that i can uh, register your name so that i can keep this uh, product in the in your name so that i don't have to look for another buyer right so now this is all harmonious if this is harmonious in between a buyer and seller it is fine there is no and there is no problem with the sharia all right and then, then again uh, there are few conditions actually uh, put by the parties it could be valid it could be also void so now let us see what are the valid conditions what are the void conditions so number 1 what are the valid conditions in the valid conditions you have three categories you have three categories let us see the first category the first category is actually something that uh, include those conditions which confirm the effect already attributed by the sharia so the effect is already there and those effect already attributed by the sharia before so it, it, because of that uh, these conditions are valid for example a conditions in a contract of a sale stipulating that the object of sale to be delivered by the buyer is valid the seller may insist that he shall keep the sold item until total payment is made this is also something valid or requiring the purchaser a down payment in return for the stated delay in the payment so everything that we discussed earlier everything that we discussed before this slide everything is actually valid valid conditions these conditions do not change the effect see underline this point whatever the condition whatever the condition that you are making whether it is a buyer whether it is a seller as long as those conditions if they are not changing the effect of a sale contract then there is no problem at all and if they do not impose any additional obligation as long as these conditions do not add any or impose any additional obligations then there is no problem at all so remember two points any conditions that not changing the effect of the contract number 1 not changing the effect number 2 not imposing additional obligations so that's all that's the key point for you if any conditions not changing the effect if any conditions that not imposing additional obligations then those are what valid conditions right as simple as that yeah those are the those are the conditions are valid condition as long as they do not change the effect and they do not impose additional obligation sir yes uh, sir, sorry to cut you off uh. yes lord uh, may i ask uh, just now sir said that uh, under this valid condition Uh, we have uh, actually two example like one is do not change the effect, one additional obligation. Yeah. So, uh, let's say uh, for the example that given by sir just now is something like if today I go to buy a refrigerator, okay, and mm-hmm. now uh, I already want to buy it. So, um, uh, if I asking for the seller like okay, now I'm going to buy this for a uh, refrigerator. Uh, from you so can i uh, can you help me to deliver this uh, refrigerator to house but yeah. for the cost of the 
uh, delivery, uh, yes. should I pay or I no need to pay? So in very this good. condition, is it um, valid or not? Very good, very good. You see, this is this is what actually, as long as uh, these conditions are harmonious within the seller and buyer, it is fine. For example, like you what you said, I'm just give, I'm just repeating the same example. Like for example, the buyer is asking for the free delivery, right? But the seller is actually saying, no, the price that I mentioned to you, it's the price for the refrigerator. So now it is up to the seller and buyer. If they agree, there is no issue. If they don't agree, definitely the contract won't happen. Oh, understood. understood. Yes. If they don't agree, it won't happen. So as long as it is harmonious between seller and buyer, but you cannot actually, um, uh, what do you call? You cannot, you, you cannot impose even addition. You see, as I told you, the another, the second uh, characteristic of a valid condition is what? The second characteristic, you should not impose additional obligations. As long as it is not additional obligation, if the seller is thinking it is not obli additional obligations, then it is fine. If he thinks it is additional obligations. And then he keep on saying that the, the price that I gave you, it's the original price for the refrigerator. But if you need a transportation, you need to pay additional 50 ringgit or 100 ringgit. And also there is a circle, you know, there is actually a, a kind of mileage uh, within five kilometer radius. If it is a 20, 30, 40 kilometers radius, then there is additional payment, right? So this is all actually as long as between buyer and seller if they are if they agree then only the, the 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 contract will happen but here no one actually can impose any additional obligations so, right? so can I say that um, if no matter what uh, what the seller or the customer asking for at least they both of them are agreed to that statement so yes. uh, in this case we can say uh, harmonious and the contract is is valid correct okay, correct. okay. you are right you are right that's why i said you need to understand um these are the additional uh additional things that we are discussing but the basically speaking the basic um the the, the basic characteristic of any contract which we agreed that sharia based conditions Right. For example, uh, the same seller cannot sell the refrigerator to you uh, without opening and showing the refrigerator. Right. Because opening the refrigerator, showing the brand, showing the quality of the refrigerator, it is actually Sharia based conditions. Because you cannot, you are not allowed to buy anything that you don't know. Right. So you, you in this same example, you can actually you should actually identify which until where is actually Sharia conditions until where it is actually the parties conditions. So until you identify until uh, you buy the product, for example, you should be uh, my you should not be minor, you should be major uh, and then uh, the product that you are uh, selling is actually you should know the product very well the brand and the quality and the variant and information about everything and also there must be a proper expression right like what we talk about the three pillars whatever is actually within the three pillars in this example it belongs to sharia conditions but now additional conditions for example just now you talk about the physical transfer ship uh, the physical delivery so this delivery is actually additional thing, but as long as it is harmonious between uh, buyer and seller, then these conditions will be valid. Yeah. So this is what we are here talking about the first category of valid conditions, which is uh, those conditions which confirms the effect already attributed by the Sharia to a certain contract. OK, next go to the second category under the valid uh, conditions refers to those conditions which agree with the effect and purpose of a contract to which they are added. 
see previously the difference is actually yeah? previously it's actually the conditions which confirm the effect already attributed by the sharia which is actually three pillars but here we are talking about uh, those conditions which agree with the effect and the purpose of a contract to which they are added for example the seller may require pledge or a guarantor if the buyer who wants to pay the price later so you see here is actually what happening additional conditions because since the the buyer doesn't want to pay right now he says okay i'm ready to buy you a refrigerator but right now i don't have money but i am i'm willing to buy you a refrigerator so now um it looks like the sale can happen but only the seller should agree your condition but now the seller says okay i agree your conditions even though we have everything here i mean you are willing to buy the expression is there and then the three contract the pillars are there but still you are you are paying me not now you are paying me after one week i need to i need you to give me some pledge yeah like rahnu something that okay you give me something um for me for example i you give me your card let's say if it is a visa card if it is a you know a credit card or debit card or you give me a guarantor make sure that someone is actually guaranteeing that uh, you will pay after two weeks so this is this also the valid conditions yeah this is comes under second category then you have the third category includes those conditions which are customarily accepted so this is something that we we do this uh, day by day because this is customarily accepted for example the purchaser may require certain services according to customs a seller may provide while concluding a contract of sale like a guarantee period during which the sold item would be required yeah so this guarantee period it is something that you know we always go and ask right okay i'm willing to buy this refrigerator but can i can you give me uh, an extended warranty yeah so then the, the the sometimes the seller will tell yeah you have five year warranty on the motor of this uh, on, on the motor of this refrigerator right uh maybe one year ex you know, one year maybe you, he might ask you he may give you additional one year extended warranty so these are the things customarily accepted also uh, another kind of valid conditions so according to hanafi this condition of uh, guarantee period on the basis of uh, juristic preference is tahsan this is tahsan if you remember we discuss about it uh, at the beginning of the class and the shafi and maliki according to them a condition of guarantee period as a matter of principle to enable the purchaser to use it at least for a reasonable period of time so i think it's not so this is the third category of the validity uh, valid contract now let us talk about the void okay now you need to understand what kind of conditions are not valid what kind of conditions are batil yeah the the batil void is actually conditions are those conditions that may favor one of the parties at the expense of another or conditions that may lead to usuri now uh, the interest thus it is not allowed that a certain contract may comprise two agreements one of which is a condition for the other for example a person is not allowed to sell an item on the condition that the purchaser the purchaser sells him something else to replace it or buy some some other articles seller or purchaser or rents him the article sold lessee or lesser or lends him either its price or some other sum lender or borrower you can see that for all kind of uh, contract whether it is a selling buying or whether it is a renting or whether it is a lending and borrowing in any kind of contract if there is any conditions that actually um not harmonious among them you know which means that it is not mutually benefiting you see when we are doing any contract when we are doing any buying and selling when we are doing any renting any lending so the most important thing is actually mutual benefit 
what do I mean? What do I mean by mutual benefit? Which means after that contract, seller will benefit from the buyer. At the same time, buyer buyer should benefit from the seller. If this mutual benefit, which is actually both sides, both parties should get the benefits from each other. If this receiving, perceiving benefit is not happening in one side, then you cannot call it mutual benefit. It is only one side benefit. This is where actually the void conditions are coming. If there is any void conditions in this case, then the contract is not valid. That's why I said if someone is actually selling something but he makes a contract that he makes a condition that okay i'm ready to sell these items to you i'm selling this refrigerator to you but you should sell me back uh, your you know maybe the old refrigerator or you know uh, maybe some other stuff from your home you cannot make the condition right but if it is harmonious and uh, you are actually uh, making it for example what they call it um, I mean the replacement for example you know uh, you, you 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 want to you want to uh, sell the old one and you want to buy the new one okay this is something that you know uh, trade in if you are doing the trade in it's fine because it is harmonious as long as the harmony is but if someone is actually renting the how uh, someone is actually selling the property to you and then he says, okay, I'm ready to sell my apartment to you. But the condition is you should give me back on the basis of the rental. I mean, if I become the property owner, I can give it to anybody. It is up to me. It is me who I choose, who I should give it to my, who I should give my home. Or maybe I myself, I can reside, I can stay in that home. But if the seller is actually making you condition saying that you should sell you should give back that property on the basis of the rental then it is actually a wide condition yeah so or when a loan is given these are some other, this is also happening when a loan is given on the condition that the borrower should buy a certain item from the lender or asking uh, the mudarib to pay certain guaranteed amount monthly. Sahib al mal al mudarib. So these are the conditions again, um, you know, uh, also uh, not valid. You know, this this thing also will happen. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm ready to uh, give you the loan, uh, but um, you know, the, sometimes if the banks are saying, okay, I'm ready to um, give you the loan. Like for example, uh, personal loan or something. But you know, if they say, okay, you should you should actually buy this one from our company. Yeah, these kind of conditions also sometimes become uh, wide conditions, so the contract will be invalid. Um, such conditions are null and void whether they are imposed by the seller or imposed by the buyer because this is additional obligation. However, the contract remain valid while void conditions are ignored. Okay, this is something uh, we need to understand the last part of the slide. However, the contracts remain valid while void conditions are ignored. So this is something, again, we are going to discuss this uh, in probably the next class because here you can see the three pillars of the contract is actually completed. You can see that. There is a parties, there is expression, there is a subject matter. But as you can see, the conditions are wrong. So if you remove the condition out, you look again in the contract. The contract is valid. Right? So that's why, let's say at the beginning he say, okay, I'm ready to sell my uh, house to you on the basis of, you know, you should give me back on the rental then actually it looks like it's a void condition of course it will be it will this condition this void condition will invalidate your contract but what if he changed his mind the seller changed his mind after one week he said okay it's fine you don't have to give me back the house for the rental then automatically 
the contract will become valid. So that's why I said the contract, however, the contracts remain valid while void conditions are ignored. Okay. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so can I say that under the void conditions, uh, let's say that, for example, like, is today I want to sell sir, some, like, I want to sell sir, my car. So in condition, uh, sir, you also already agreed to buy my car. Okay. But now I'm asking for other requirements. So like, okay, sir, if today you want to buy my car, uh, uh, because now I'm the seller, you are the buyer, right, sir? Mm, okay. And I was asking for the sir, like, okay, sir, uh, now you have to buy uh, other thing from me. Let's say, like, maybe my motorbike. Mm. If you want to buy my car, you also need to buy my uh, uh, buy my motorbike together. Yes. So in this condition, can I say that it is already work condition because it is, it is. yeah, it actually is. uh our intention is I want to sell you my actually yes. I want to sell you my both thing, which is the car and the motorbike. But yes. intention for sir is only want to buy my car. Mm. So in this condition, can I say that it's a work condition because okay. it is not a mutual very good you see you see here actually um the way how you express your contract how did you do the marketing did you said uh did you tell me that is it, it is a bundle it is a bundle contract for example you want to sell your car and your motorbike together if this is how you advertise it is up to me whether i should choose or not but you advertise that okay you are selling your car so i came to you to buy your car and then suddenly you said okay i'm ready to give you my car but together with my car you also should buy motorbike you should buy my motorbike then it becomes the white condition but if you are actually putting the advertisement you want to sell both uh, the motorbike and the car to someone then it is fine if it is your own advertisement if i agree i am willing to buy uh, both things to maybe i might need both of them then it is fine right i'll give you another example the very good example in this uh, in this in this in this uh, way that you are asking you know when um, uh, when people are uh, selling the house they also want to sell the furniture together right uh, this thing happens all the time so now um, so when if they are actually uh, advertising saying that I'm selling my apartment for 1 million ringgit and whatever and then they mention okay this is the house if they already mentioned that okay include the furnitures everything you know the sofa you know the fan the aircon everything everything all the furnitures so if that is how they show you the product then you have to buy together you cannot simply go that no 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 i don't want to buy your uh, i don't want to buy your furnitures i came here only for the house you cannot say that because they advertise everything together so one million ringgit you cannot say okay i don't want your furniture so just give me your house for uh, nine hundred thousand ringgit so maybe one million maybe hundred thousand for furnitures cut it out so but their intention to sell the whole house with furniture that's why they said the price is one million but but if the same person said okay this is the house uh, let's say this house for nine hundred thousand and then you went to buy the house the apartment suddenly he said inside the house you also have the furniture so i i the condition is uh, if you buy the furnitures then only i'm ready to sell my house then it becomes additional uh, obligation to the buyer because buyer came to only buy your house because according to your advertisement you did not mention about the furniture but later when he was willing to buy your house now you are saying that no 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 you should also buy the furnitures uh, so this is all how you actually advertise how you actually inform, uh, like I said, the expression must be clear and also 
the subject matter must be very clear. As long as if there is no issues, then then it's fine. So that's why I said additional obligations uh, might uh, uh, invalidate your contract. Yes, uh, uh, I think I already uh, understood it. Like okay, something okay. like uh, you have to mention it first. If we yeah. follow the first condition that uh, already mentioned in the con contract, so that's fine. You mm -hmm. cannot like asking for any requirement on the spot like suddenly. Exactly. It happens to many. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you a big example, but not necessarily. No need to go that far for apartment, the one million ringgit. Even sometimes, I tell you, uh, even you, 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 you buy a small product, they will tell that uh, this product comes with uh, service charges. This product comes with uh, warranty, guarantee uh, charges. So these are the things people do, which is actually wrong. You know, because the price that they mention, for example, you, uh, you uh, I want to buy a product for 75 ringgit, but when I see the bill, it's become 100 ringgit above. But it shows only 75 ringgit. And then later say, no, no, no. This is 75 ringgit is a product. But additionally, we give you additional battery. We give you additional, you know, phone cover. We give you additional. <laughs> but we didn't ask for it. Right? Yes, yes. So it, it, it happens. So maybe you are buying a phone for 500 ringgit. But the bill will come like 600. And then they say, no, no, we are giving you additional stuff. Uh, but you, you, you didn't say that first. You mentioned the price of the the phone is 500 so i'm here to buy your phone for 500 why are you giving me all the old stuff that you are having because maybe they want to it's called bundle it's called bundle sell unless they mention okay that's why you can clearly see now for example you go to any e-commerce uh, they said okay variants okay package a package b package c right and then there is another package only phone so if you choose that package is fine with you. But if you choose a different package, it is up to you whether you want to. So the, the, the things are uh, most probably right now is being followed uh, when it comes to a public platform like e-commerce. Uh, very good. Uh, for example, if you go to a supermarket, the good one, the big one, it's been followed. But the problem comes when you are approaching some small shop when you are approaching like a small vendor. Yeah? So it looks like the, the, the price is very cheap. <laughs> so you are willing to buy, but you go there and then you surprised to see that you, they add this, they add that, then, then, you know, we get like, Oh, what happened? What's happening? So sometimes uh, we have to be very careful and uh, not necessarily you see the price is low, not necessarily it has to be low. You have to be very, very careful. Sometimes they say uh, this TV usually 10,000 ringgit, uh, but we are willing to give you for 3,000 ringgit and for suddenly people go because it is a greedy, you know, the people, this is actually greedy. Uh, we call it hers in Arabic. This is greedy. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, spoiled our money. Um, people will go and then they buy, they want to, they are willing to buy for 3,000. And then he said, okay, you pay upfront 3,000 first. Let me go and buy and, and bring the product to you. So you pay 3,000 and you will, you, 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 are, you are waiting for him to come down, bringing the TV, which is worth of 10,000 ringgit. But you just wait, waiting, waiting, waiting. You've been waiting for three days. That guy never come back. <laughs> the guy who took 3,000 from you, <laughs> he never, uh -huh. he never came back. So now, to whom to blame? Do you want to blame that uh, buyer and seller? You want to blame that seller? I will say blame yourself because in the market, the product is 10,000. If someone come and say it is available of 3,000, you should be aware. Someone is actually uh, making you fool. Right? So now that's why um, anything that goes uh, up, uh, below the price, uh, you have to be very careful. You have to be very, very careful because there are so many scams going on. And uh, even, even everything, I, not necessarily it has to be like product like 10,000, even 100 ringgit, 200 ringgit also. Uh, it, the, there, is a, there is a price for everything. If it is very, very low, then uh, it should be 
something that maybe it is a stolen product <laughs> sometimes people come and see okay i have a i have a watch uh, i have I, i have a watch for 550 ringgit usually they sell for 500 ringgit which means that it must be stolen watch it must be something so we have to be very careful yes leon uh sir uh, could you uh, explain and give some example under the condition for concluding the trade regarding a general and specific condition you, you what do you mean general a uh, general condition and the specific condition under the condition for concluding the contract yes yes the general condition let's say we talked about uh, the valid the valid um we talked about the valid conditions and before that we talked about the um conditions that given by ya sharia okay this is actually again um uh, you know this this is already sharia based conditions you are, you are talking about this are you talking about this slide the one i'm showing you yes sir okay good so this uh, is actually what we call as i told you we already talked about it earlier in the uh, class uh, where we talked about the three pillars of contract so here we are only just giving you a different name because it comes under the conditions so now uh, sharia conditions and the sharia pillars are the same right so now here uh, like when i said general conditions is refers to three pillars again generally speaking but when it, when i when i say specific condition it is for example the physical transfer of a property is a condition in a contract of gift when i said that the physical transfer i'm not talking about the delivery two different thing i'm not talking about the refrigerator delivery to your house here in this slide i'm talking about physical transfer which means that i cannot sell the refrigerator to you without showing you the refrigerator without showing you the refrigerator so now i say okay this is the refrigerator this is the price later we will talk about whether i should deliver to your house or not that is a different thing but now the physical so now for example i want to give you uh, a, a a phone as a gift so i should give you in physical transfer meaning i i should have that phone then only i can give you the hadiya i can give you the gift the same thing goes to borrowing the same thing goes to deposit loan and mortgage and everything likewise two witnesses in the contract of marriage the two witnesses physically should be available for the marriage without that two uh, witnesses uh, the marriage is not valid so this is the specific conditions that we call it but there is a difference between what i told you delivery and the physical transfer here what i uh, what i am talking about here the physical transfer is most important is physical transfer it's not physical delivery transfer i have my phone after the sale i transfer the phone to you <laughs> so you become the owner so this is what we call physical transfer right so i have the refrigerator in my shop after you pay 1000 ringgit this refrigerator it is yours so i'm physically transferring to you but now delivering to your house is another thing so delivering to your house will come under the conditions stipulated by the parties but transferring this refrigerator to in your hand is actually comes under the sharia con conditions i hope you understand the difference here yeah. all right yes um regarding so uh, so the general condition is like have the three pillars right yes okay okay understood thank you okay okay thank you very much uh, inshallah so i think um the the next uh, wednesday there is no class am i right uh, is it is it holiday 20 next wednesday oh yeah we start yes, Oh, okay okay so wednesday is a holiday so so which means that uh, that coming monday will be your quiz uh, so inshallah uh, the quiz will be like uh, last time uh, inshallah you i will send you the link uh, the zoom link so not this one not the google meet you will use the zoom link 
like last time inshallah will be also sharing your screen uh, also please uh, switch on your web camera all right so inshallah i will see you uh, next monday so um so the exams will cover until these conditions until today's class yeah also inshallah i will be uh, uploading the video so inshallah you can also watch the video on youtube okay then so, so any other question uh, any other questions uh, Fatima? Uh, uh, yes from which topic uh, from which topic until this condition uh, from uh, from theory of contract right i mentioned in the quiz uh, did you did you see that yes sir you already mentioned it on oh, italy okay what are the contract what are the conditions uh, sorry what are the chapters theory of contract three pillars until this uh, okay. topic so only three right okay you have three pillars of the contract the next one is what purpose and effect the next one is what conditions of contract so now uh, according to it is the same uh, chapter by the way these three things comes under the same chapter but according to my slide that i shared with you in the italian can you can someone give me the number of the slides on oh, so six seven and eight okay very good thank you leon so remember the slide number six the slide number seven and the slide number eight so this this three slide numbers these three uh, slides uh, so in a way uh, again all these three comes under the theory of contract uh, but namely three pillars and the purpose and effect and finally condition of contract so all these three will be covered in the uh, upcoming quiz yes the format will be the same uh, like last time inshallah all right okay any other questions um sir i want to ask regarding the final because when i check the uh imaklum, this course has final is it true yes yes you will have final exam inshallah. yeah yeah of course uh, i will inshallah inform you about it as well uh, after yeah it's like uh you 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 you, you are final exam um uh like like according to ahmad um like for every exam for every class you have final exams right for every class you have final exams so we call it a uh, final assessment so there will be inshallah final assessment for you as well so it will be uh yeah it will be final exam but you will be doing it online all right thank you sir okay then so inshallah i will okay then so in that case i will see you next monday okay Okay, Salaam Alaikum